Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll create a complete AI app for helping people to learn new languages, but completely based on AI. So what we want to solve as a problem is the fact that when you start using apps like Duolingo or Babel, you have this process of learning languages by clicking on buttons and things, but it does not mimic the real life interactions that you can have with people. And today we'll build a complete AI application that can solve that by providing you with an AI tutor that can speak English with you, put you in real environments, and then yeah, help you learn a new language easily. So in our app, we'll try to be as lean as possible. So we'll build an AI application from the start to the deployment, which means from the ideation with everything around it, how we build the front end, how we build the back end, how we deploy it, which model we choose, um, which text to speech, uh, API we choose, maybe open source or uh, closed source. So we'll give you an overview of all that. And in the same time, uh, I will show you exactly how uh, to integrate all those tools together to create something actually interesting. So to create a complete, complete AI app from scratch. And when it comes to usability, we'll make it easy for the user to actually uh, choose and switch between open source models and maybe closed source models if we want to. But in this specific tutorial right now, we'll be building something with Google GMA2, uh, 2 billion parameters. And you will see how incredible is it. It's extremely fast. It is extremely interesting and the results are extremely good. So you will see the result directly during the demo of the, of the application. So let me just show you a quick quickly how uh, the application would work. So you have to sign up and we'll use Clark for the authentication. So I will do it with my Google account. And then when you finish signing up, you have this customization. So it means uh, your language tutoring will be based on many factors. And one of the factors is actually your language level. So the first thing the app prompts you is to choose one language level. So let's say we know some word and then yeah, just click here, there's some word. And then it will ask you, what is your objective? So put you in a real scenario where you are actually practicing toward this objective. So maybe you want to push your career, connect with people, uh, yeah, support your education or just do it for fun. Let's say we want to prepare for, for travel. Okay, let's say we want to prepare for travel. And then the last part is actually your um, commitment. How many minutes you want to put into this language learning task per day. So we'll just choose something pretty simple, like 10 minutes per day. And then when we finish this setup, we'll be directed toward this dashboard where we have multiple professors or multiple tutors, AI tutors, that can actually help us um, and put us in real environments. Yes, so we end up on this page where we can talk to our tutor. Um, yeah, so we can say hi, for example, and um, AI tutor will answer back with some response. Um, the AI is actually prompted to answer back as an AI tutor and based on the profile that you provided. So yeah, for example, let's say, hi, great to hear from you. I can definitely help you prepare for your upcoming trip because I mentioned that I was doing this for a trip. So what is your objective? Vocabulary building, grammar pronunciation practice, conversation practice, cultural awareness, reading and writing. You, know, you can choose. Uh, let's say we want to learn new words. We want to learn new words. Um, let, let me clear. I want to learn, learn new words. And then, yeah, the answer, you can see how fast the model is. So the answer is ex instant with uh, Gemma 2 million parameters. And it's really accurate. So that's a great goal. I can help you with a variety of new world related to your destination. You can focus on every day vocabulary. What are some words you would like to learn first? So let's say um, I'm traveling to France and like to learn French. related so the good part here is that um we have like a feedback server feedback server that it's an api that actually gives you a uh, feedback uh, on what you just wrote or what you just say to the ai 
and um we had uh we have a text to speech server that can actually read this out loud for you so you can actually switch here between the oral and the chat experience and the oral experience we just have to directly speak with the ai this is something we're building throughout the tutorial as well and um yeah so here for example we'll say something pretty nice like um what do you want to learn do you want to learn about transportation in the country the accommodation the food and drink the culture um yeah so what is your first first step so that's extremely interesting um, and uh, yeah we can have like uh beside this we can have like this um different tutorials as well we have this first one the description is not really relevant for the moment we have uh we will have specific prompt for each tutorial so for example this guy will be the i don't know the, this girl will be the cool girl that you can speak with um this would be a baby uh, or, or some whatever so in, in this scenario we'll have different tutorials or different scenarios based on your objective actually so maybe you can meet child children you can meet some girls there you can meet some teachers there so it's actually based on the objective that you gave to the ai and you will generate those tutors for you so you can practice with them your language skills so um let's say yeah this is the global picture of what we are building and what we will be building let's just try to have a more uh, technical overview of that so let's go to our x called row and start drawing some architectural things so first of all we need a front end for our application so we'll be building the whole application front end back end ai text to speech everything so we'll need the front end first so let's say the first component that we need in our app is the front end um text front end okay and then this front end should be completely separate from the back end because the back end should be multi-level so we, we need to have a back end that can actually um switch between different other components so we need as well uh back end components here and they will communicate via rest api um by the way, um, I hope this um, terms, REST API and others are not really new for you, but we'll go through it during the process of building the app. So for the moment, they just say, yeah, we have the REST API here, REST API. And then this backend is just here to direct the front-end call to different services. So we wanted to have a possibility to switch between different AI models, to switch between different text to speech providers. So we will have maybe to choose between Google Gma uh, 2 billion parameters model or uh, Llama 7B or Mistral or maybe OpenAI model if you want to, if you want to pay for their credits. Um, yeah, but so this backend should be modeled now. So we need a separated AI model that can actually handle that. So we need something here, AI. And we also need something for text to speech. text to speech and then this backend model this backend will communicate with these two separate systems and the good part is that we need like a container here we need a container uh models here that has different ai models like this Yes, so the user can switch uh, from the front end, the front end send the REST API call to the back end, and the back end can actually save the new model that the user will be using for all the requests. Um, and then we actually have, we want to have the possibility to have a, as well many text to speech components. So maybe we will choose, I think on the channel, we discovered a lot of text to speech application, but we just had one tutorial showing a use, how to use one of these models and today we'll just have a big of a big overview of everything so you can switch between a uh, cookie tts open source model that's actually free and you can run on your computer or maybe elven lab or maybe open ai text to speech model so uh this will make it pretty simple for the user to have like the voice and um maybe clone your own voice and learn with your own cloned voice that, that would be nice um yes yeah, so we will do that during this application we have this text to speech model one as well 
and then yes, text to speech model two. Okay, so this look like a really rough <laughs> overview of what we will be building. Um, and the front end will be um, next JS up, next JS up, next JS here. Thing in, in the color next JS. This front end will be next JS. This will be next JS as well, but next JS API. I think it's with Express actually. Um, this part will surely be um, here. This model part will be um, Olama. So we want Olama to run um, in, in a separate Docker containers. And so we can switch models and just specify the model we want to run. So we don't want to care about GPU. We don't want to care about CPU. We don't want to care about Python server models. We don't want to care about optimization. We just care about calling the model at the right time. So we need Olama and we'll surely need... Um, also, um, we're gonna put it. Some external calls. So let's say uh, long chain. Using long chain can do that. Long chain. Yes. And here for the open source model, I think we just, for the text to speech model, I think we just stick with Python um, and then, yeah. Python will just com communicate with maybe external systems or internal system. So when it comes to mm, local open source text to speech model, we'll use a local model. But when it comes to uh, closed source models like Element Labs, OpenAI text to speech model, we'll be just connecting directly to these models, um, yeah, and getting the response from there. Same for this part for the AI part. So this is a uh, rough picture of what we're building and in the process we'll be breaking this down into smaller steps and into smaller chunks that we can easily understand and explain and uh, yeah so also in the next video I will just show you and explain a bit more the tech stack the actual tech stack so here we have like our profile and uh, the link to our learning journey so I'll just explain a bit more about our tech stack and uh, what we are trying to achieve uh, with technology specifically into um, these, these tools we'll be using. I think we missed some Docker here, we missed some Docker Compose, we missed some. So we'll be explaining that in the coming videos. And um, at the end of the video, you will have of the long tutorial, you will have two different links. You will have the first link that is a real quickly executable um, desktop application that you can just download and run. It will run everything. No need to code, no need to. So you just have the model running, um, the front end, the back end, um, the, the server, because we need some part that are not here actually, but we need them, the database as well. So we need like a database here. Mm, yes, quickly go database here. Database. And you need to get with the database. Yeah, so, um, yes, so we'll have this small application that you can just directly run and run the model for you with everything you need around it. But this will be mainly with open source models, so you can run it without having to pay. We can run it on offline, we can run it uh, whenever we want, and it will be fast enough to run on CPU and GPU. And uh, we'll have a second code that will actually give you the source code of the deployable model, so you can use it for your own idea or startup or whatever you want to build and then extend it uh, as you will want. So this is a bit an overview of what we'll be building in the upcoming videos. I hope you will like this tutorial and uh, yeah, so let's meet in the next part of the tutorial. Thanks and hello and welcome back to the second part of our tutorial we will be definitely building the complete application. So we explained this architecture during the first video where we kind of explained that we'll build something on the front end with Next.js and the back end with Next.js API and connect it to different AI models and connect it to different text-to-speech models with uh, these AI models being managed by Olama and also connection to different AI models being managed by Longchain. And here we have a uh, different Python's um, text-to-speech model that we can switch between uh, to make the user 
uh, more comfortable to make the user be able to choose the model he's more comfortable with. And we also talked about the part where we will have like a database um, to save uh, different users data. So this was what we explained in the first part of the video. And uh, the breakdown of our front end pages are actually these. We don't have a lot of pages. We just have, I would say, yeah, three, four, seven pages. So we have the index page, the weak landing page, a very short and the street landing page. We have a login page, a register page that will be fully managed by Cloud. Let me just note that here. Um, yeah. This part will be managed by Cloud. And I will explain it to you in a few seconds. We have Cloud here. And uh, we have onboarding, and the onboarding process is just here to uh, guide the user to the personalization of his learning journey. So we just ask some few questions that we will feed the model with, and then um, the model will be more personalized depending on the user uh, needs. So we have now the last page this is our assistant page where we will have the interface where you can speak with the assistant and, and, yeah, and everything. So this is what we will do in this part of the video, the front end part, we will just build these pages um, using the technology I will present in a few minutes. But, but I wanted to uh, make this tutorial as practical as possible and avoid um, things that I, would, I estimate will not help someone trying to build an AI app. So I will not be going through the visual CSS front end so much. I will just explain to you a bit more about the front end thing, but I will provide a Doppler starter where you can just pull it and get all the front end need, so just the front end that you will need for the application. So it means you will have the design of all these pages. I'll show it to you uh, later how you can do that. Um, and then, yeah, you can customize it if you want, um, but maybe I, I can give you some few basics of Taiwan uh, that we will be using in the project and also maybe some few basics of uh, next year. So you have the need the everything you need to actually start and run the project so that's my point so uh, i just did a really rough design of the landing page it's just something like this we have a navigation bar here this this is like this navigation bar we have some kind of call to action here um just to say what this is what you are doing and we have this pretty nice image here and if you are wondering how to print this kind of image you can do it with canva you can do it with Sigma. it's not really complicated and i will provide it in the startup pack as well. That's it. So let's uh, get into the technology that we'll be using during uh, our project. First, for front end, we we'll use Next.js, and Next.js is just a React framework um, that just add the server side rendering to React. It has a lot of potential and a lot of functionality that can help. Um, and the good part is that um, with the server server side rendering part, you can have um, SEO, uh, your, your website will be able to be crawled by search engines first. You still keep the um, React interactivity, which means you have the single page application. You have a really nice routing paradigm, I will say, um, even though they are changing it from time to time. You have um, a lot of APIs that will help you do a lot of other things, and you can deploy your website by clicking on a few things with the Vessel platform or with any other cloud provider you will want. So we'll be going with next year when we come to the front end um, framework because of that specifically. And then for the styling, we'll be using Taiwan CSS. For those who are familiar with uh, CSS, most of the time you have to write the CSS yourself or maybe use some component oriented library like bootstrap or others but taiwan is like utility based which means you are writing the css into the html without having to uh go into the css page and um write the class yourself so it means if you want the background with this color just add this uh if you want uh yeah a, a c core image you just have uh i think it's rounded full yeah, on the image, you yeah, know, just have a rounded tool. If you want it to be centered, you have a text center and and so forth and so on. And 
directly if you want it to be responsive you can also do it directly into the html without having to write um, custom breakpoints into your CSS code. So that makes it pretty easy, for, I think, to build uh, front-end applications. And when it comes to authentication, we'll be using Clark. It makes it extremely easy to manage your user authentication flow and authorization for your application. They have a pretty simple API for Next.js. So you just create an account here. Um, for this tutorial, you will not need to pay anything with zero dollar you can have 10,000 users so if you even deploy the app you will wait until 10,000 users to play something and uh, that's nice and it makes it really easy for you to integrate authorization authentication and flow into your application so these are the tools that we will be using um, for python i think yeah python i yeah i did a lot of tutorial about python in this channel so yeah in python is just a programming language pretty Nice. It's used a lot in the data science and uh, most of the models hosted on Hugging Face or other platforms are actually more uh, integrated into Python than other, language, and then other languages. So Python is a good solution here. And then when it comes to the AI models themselves, um, we have done in previous video about Olama, Lantain, uh, Cookie TTS, Eleven Labs, and much more. I can I will put the link of maybe all these tutorials in the description so you can watch them again. But when it comes to serving our AI model, we'll be using Olama. So it's help you run and um, provide and, and expose um, open source model as we are after we want to use um, Jima in our application and other open source language model. Olama for me is the way to go. Uh, now depend if you want to run something that you have a lot more control on it will be better to do it directly into your code uh, but for me um handling the, the, the resources handling the api and the complexity of these models we can hand that to uh, on a rough moment and launching as well is a really really interesting um framework on top of uh, late language models I think we can have it here, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, we have that shape here. It just helps you to um, have a layer on top of the application and can, that can directly connect to different uh, language models. And in our specific case here, uh, we want it to make it easy for us to actually connect to uh, different providers by switching two parameters without having to write a long code or whatever. And that's not just that. It, Langchain gives you a really huge API to do a lot of other things um, when it comes to AI related use cases. So I think you can go on the website and browse and see what are the use cases that you can have. You have like SQL to use. I think even um, agent, you can build agent with uh, Langchain. You can do uh, pre-augmented generation. You can do uh, code understanding, a lot of other things. So if you're interested by these specific topics, you can just come, come to the launching website and you would see a lot of these use cases um yes so i think in terms of tool we have everything yeah but uh, also cookie tts i think we did a lot of tutorial about it here on the, on the, on the channel um, yeah so it's an open source text-to-speech um model it's pretty good um in terms of quality of voice for an open source model so we'll be integrating it into our, into our application as well but uh, we are planning to also integrate a uh, plus um, text-to-speech model like the open ai text-to-speech model they, they released it a few times ago a few months ago and it's pretty nice i think it's the same model that, that is integrated into chat gpt so giving the possibility to the user to switch to that would be nice as well so if you have like an open ai api key it would be nice to have the possibility to switch between Open source model and Microsoft model. We also have Eleven Lab. We did the tutorial about Eleven Lab as well. Um, and uh, with Eleven Lab, the nice part is that it includes the voice. So if you want your language tutorial to be yourself, you can clone your whole voice and use it in your API. So that will be something we can do as well during the tutorial. So we'll go progressively. We'll first build a complete application with an open source model and open source um, text to speech model as well. And then 
progressively roll out much more functionality to the application. So this, that's it for the tool we will be using. And uh, let me just present to you now um, some setup that you need to for for to have, to have the project up and, up and running. Okay, so um, we'll come back to the third part of our video where we actually start building the app. So um, in this part, we'll I will show you the base starter thing you need um, for your project with all the pages and um, components. You have the index page, you have the embodying pages. Here you also have the assistant chat page. Everything is static here. But I will explain to you um, a bit more about what is going on into this front end. So we will not be just using it. Um, I will just have a few minutes to explain um, yeah, globality of the front end. So how things are related and how things are built in general. So, Let's first start by cloning this, cloning this repo. So, call, yep, and open a VS Code instance. We'll open something like this, and then open open a folder. So we will just create a folder uh, in our home called um, Dublin, and we will open this folder. So now we open a terminal. Yes, trust. We open a terminal, and then. Let me just, yeah. And then we do a git clone, we paste this link and we put a dot. The dot means you clone everything and you put it into the, the specific folder that the we have here. And then you clone everything and yeah, push. Yeah, the project is public. So normally it shouldn't be a problem. Let me just try with this. Let's see if the link instead, instead of the this is a link. Oh, nice. Uh, so we have uh, our base structure here. And then let me just clear this. Um, and uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, npm install. But I actually prefer Yarn. It's up to you, but I think when you install a JS into your computer, it comes with npm. So let's use npm throughout the project. Just to npm install, pull install all the dependencies that you need for the project, which means everything you see here. Uh, flag, um, Olama, Olama, mm. uh, React, uh, SQLite for the database and everything we will need throughout the project. And um, yeah, when this is done, you can directly have a look to your into your project. You just have to do npm run dev, and it will launch the application on this board three thousand here. And you, when you click on the board and you click on the link, it will open the front page. Now we need to set up some few parameters for our website to completely work. Yeah, as you see here, we, we are missing some API keys for Clark. And for that, we have to come at this uh, uh, variable here, this specific file, copy and paste, and then you change it to uh, local. And uh, for your Clark API key, you need the uh, recipe key and the security key. And for that, you need to go to your Clark dashboard. So for the moment, uh, you need to create an account on Clark and create a new project. Pretty, pretty simple. And after that, you come at the bottom is here. You will have API keys. You can copy API keys. You can choose your language here, uh, whatever. We are using XJS, so we just copy everything here. And we paste it here. So that's it. If we go back to our website, now we have this beautiful UI website. You can, I think I am still logged in locally, so we can log out. And uh, yeah, it will give you this nice logging um, page that you can still have. Uh, you, you can have the login or the sign up or, or other pages. So it depends. Um, the login page as well. This is, uh, no, I think this is confusing. This is a create a call page and this is the login page. So the text is not right, but this just will solve that uh, in our project. So this is the base uh, starter pack for our project. This image is actually not the right image, so we'll, we'll replace that. Now uh, let's just do that quickly right now. In our public, I think it's called um, if I'm not wrong, I know it's directly online. So our first thing is just to replace this image first, and for that I think I have it on my Figma. If I'm not wrong, Figma. 
here and it's the first Sigma project. And then yeah, we have our image here. Nice. We just export this image. Yeah, banner, and then we have it somewhere here. Got it, and we paste it into our public folder here. Yes, and let me name it to banner, only banner. And go back to our index page, get the image. The image was the online link directly that we need to remove. And here we just need to do kind of with PNG, PNG, yes. And then we should be good to go. Nice. So we have a new image. This image as well uh, is into the GitHub page, but it is built here. Actually, I just scroll it with Sigma. And it's really simple. It's just three seagulls with a few icons on both sides. Yeah, so it shouldn't be a problem as well. This is our front end. So I will first create a, an empty project and show you how to set up the, the front end and few things about Taiwan so you can understand what it will go through uh, the next year's project itself. And for that, let's let open the code again. This time we'll open this and uh, let's just create a new um, project somewhere. Let's say open folder uh, in our desktop again. Let's say test of mm, playground. In this playground, I'll just show you quickly um, how to set up next years and what is Taiwan and how to install it, those, those few things. So let's open a new terminal here. And to create a next year's project, you need a package called create next app. Create next app and up here, it's here. You need to use it this way, npx create next app. I think we'll just do it like this. And then we do that again because we want it to be in the playground folder and it will ask a few things we want type three. You can choose if you don't want to have be strict about types into your application, you can choose not to use type three, but let's use type three. Let's link, of course, um, Taiwan. Yes, because we need Taiwan. Um, source folder, you can choose to have a source folder. I prefer not. Uh, no. Um, app router, no. Uh, a route is actually the new router that next introducing the latest version, I think. Um, I still prefer to stick to the page router for the moment. So if you are mm, okay with the app router, you can just refactor the code and use a app router um, instead of the page router. But in this playground, I think the whole project will use the page router. Uh, import alias now. Um, Yes, so it will do that. It will just create the base structure that you can see here. It's actually the same structure. So you will see that it is not actually that complicated, um, all the things we did here. So this base structure is actually the same thing. We have the public, which is our public thing here. We have the pages, which is our pages here. Um, we have the style, which is our style here. And only new things here are the next year. And this next is not really, you're not concerned about this folder because it is uh, a folder where next you, that next you uh, internally to um, build your project and make it run in your com in your in your browser and this real time thing everything is going into these things, things here and then uh, the node modules we already have it here so it's actually just the folder that keep all the dependency of your project so it means all the things that you install here are actually into this node module here okay so um, if you do a npm if you do npm run dev again in this new project playground project you will see pretty nice. It will change the pot because the thousand is used. But you'd see this pretty nice next yes page. Um, yeah, I like the simple next yes page here with some link to the documentation and, and the deployment and some templates. And also you can start with some templates if you want to after this boiler page is actually this one that we have here that come by default. But you have much more templates to use if you want to, you know, if you want to use. I think you have AI templates as well. If I'm not wrong, you have AI templates here. Uh, you have chatbots, you have a uh, customer review, and, and much more. So it depends. You have AI headshot generator. That's actually pretty nice as well. 
uh, that you can use while uh, creating your app. Um, yeah. So we actually have this. And um, what we need to do, I think the new, the only thing that's new here is this component part here. So the component is actually a way that you're having a React. I think if you know React, uh, you will understand what the component is. But for those who does not know React that much, the component is just a way to separate your front, your application into different small parts that uh, you can, um, that will avoid you to replicate multiple code. So it means, for example, if you come in our index page here, you have this Taiwan. I will I'll just come back to Taiwan later. We have uh, this here. So let's say we want to have um, um, a list, a list of items. Let's say we have some items. So we have div uh, item one. A lot of things like this. Item five, let's just say something like this. And then uh, we want to give some classes to this item. So let's say we give some class to this item. It's like class name, text, red, 500. No, it's just to it. Um, yeah, in some pages, uh, B5 and B2. What can I say? Um, Yo, know, BG, red, 50. Yeah, something like this. Uh, we will see here that we have these different icons here. We have these different items here. So the only problem now is that if we need, to, let's say we want to change something, this is spread across different pages, for example. So it means you have this component, this list as well in another page that we have created. If we want to change the class, so we, we will say, oh, uh, this background is, just, is not that nice. The text is not that nice. Let's change it. We'll have to go through each part here and then change, go to each page and do the same thing. But when we have a component, you can just create the component here, come come to that, for example, list of TX6. And then we just uh, export const items, go to uh, this and to return IGS6 syntax thing, yeah, this, and then you paste this inside. That's it, that's simple. So you can maybe get some parameters here, like uh, pro, like let's say um text, and you have to decide text is a string. Yeah, you can do it like this to get the text. So you will have now to do something like this. Let me just save this. Now what you do is like you have this item component that we can just import, and you will pass a text component here. We'll say this is the text. And then instead of duplicating and changing everything here, you will just change your initial component. So you can even treat it like an HTML item. So it means instead of having the text as a parameter here, uh, as an attribute, you can have it as a children. And for that, you just need to get children from this children. And then children is not a text. This one is actually an HTML element, which is not any, it's not a problem. Um, yeah, children is the capability addition is never used. And then you have something here like uh, children. Okay. Uh, so now, oh, yes, I think it's a type of problem. Yeah. So now you just come here instead of having the text here, you have it like a new HTML element that we just created. Yes. And you pass it this way. Nice. And you will come here and see this is a text again. So now, uh, whenever you want to duplicate this anywhere you want, uh, you can do this like that. It will do it here. But now when you want to change it, you just come here and maybe you say, okay, I prefer a darker red here, for example, or a lighter, yeah, a lighter right here and a darker on the text. No, no, sorry. Uh, darker on the text and a light on the background. For example, like this, yeah, nice. So all your components are updated automatically. So that's why we have components here. And in this component folder, you can see the chat bubble, uh, this small chat thing. Um, um, you have the navigation bar, which is our header here um, in our application, this header part here. We have uh, just two other things, uh, the nav on onboarding, because the onboarding nav is different. Yeah. And this is just reusable components somehow uh, that we have with custom code because we don't want to replicate this code throughout our project. And um, yeah, so 
Next thing is when you want a new route, which means you want something like um, slash sure test, for example. Um, yeah, you can come here in your pages, like here, sorry, here in your pages, and you create a new page called the test. And then now this test page will work, will directly to these new pages, and you can delete everything inside. Um, and have your new test page like this, right? And uh, the local host will still have this text, but the new route will be like this. So it's pretty simple. The routing is completely handled by Next.js, which makes, which makes it extremely good uh, as a tool. But in your React, you will have other problems because you will have to use other libraries. But that's not a problem with Next.js as well. So um, this is the kind of strict basics that you can that you may need to know about Next.js. And if you want nested routes, you will have to create a folder like let's say um um blog and then into your blog you have uh, my my content the tsx and then this will be on the blog slash content so we can just export again we, we don't even need to export so let's just copy this and paste here um i don't want to recreate all these things so let's just delete this and say um H1, our blog post. And then when you come to blog slash, I think it's called my content, small type of problem, it will render it your blog post directly. So you have this nested route based on folder structures in Next.js as well. So now uh, let's get into some small, really quick basics of Taiwan. The first thing is that everything in Taiwan is um, kind of utility class. So it means instead of typing display class into your, I don't know, style, some quick here, start typing some class, and then um, doing display flags, and then next direction, column, and then a lot of other things like that. You just have to come to your website here and do maybe a flex, and then the flex call, and then it will automatically append this class to this new element that you have here. So it makes it pretty simple for you. So you can see here, for example, in the English page, let's just move our elements here. You have the flex, you have the minimum string size. Uh, we have the flex column, we have the item center for the flex um, items, I think. We have the just to just to find content between. We have the max width. So you have all these utility classes, so you can find them all here into the Taiwan documentation. I just come here and um, documentation and uh, yeah, we'll find how to install, how to use uh, utility class fundamentals. You have almost everything you need here, um, box sizing, display, floats. The documentation is pretty um, simple to um, yeah, to grab. And you have font family as well. You have font style. You have everything you need, uh, almost everything you need. And the good part about Taiwan is that it has a huge amount of a huge ecosystem around it. So it means when you're using Taiwan, you can actually have access to a lot of things, which means you have access to component libraries. They have like their paid component libraries um, section where you can pay for them for some components. But you also have some free component library like Shad, CN here. And uh, you can just copy most of the components here and paste into your project. We have a lot of components. Uh, you have this avatar component already built. You have cards. You have, um, yeah, a lot of other, of a, this input OTP that's pretty nice. Yeah, you have this already built, but yes, so you have the dark mode automatically built in um, with, with, with uh, Teming that come with next year's. And it's supported throughout all the components that you have there. So you have the dark mode and light mode. That's, that's pretty nice as well. If you want to build this kind of application, so um, yeah, just kind of accordion as well. If I'm not wrong, there will be accordion. Yes, okay. Um, carousel. Yeah, this kind of carousel as well. So it gives you this pretty nice component that's directly into your code. So it's just copy and paste this into your code. So you can change it if you want. You can customize it if you want. And uh, all those things are based on next year's and hopefully, um, um, yeah, 
the Taiwan as well. So uh, that's it for the quick preview of everything here. Now we can go back to our to our code. Yes, so let's close all this. Okay, that's yeah. And we have actually grown the starter project here. So let's close our playground. We don't need it anymore and save. Oh. And then we can go back to our main project now. Okay. So I will just go through some few things and explain if, as much as I can so we can understand the whole front end. Here we have, um, I'm just reducing a bit, but I hope this is large enough. I'm not sure. Anyway. So here we have a main D that's just full screen, and here we have some background. We go, hey, that's completely hey. So you cannot scroll. That means the hey is hundred percent visual height. Um, fixed. We have this image here, which is our round image, and we have everything that's absolute on top of the image. So we can see here some absolute elements somewhere. If I'm wrong, yes. Mm, yeah, absolute here. And then we have our nav components. It's actually exactly how I was explaining it before. This nav component is just a navigation bar here. This and this. So if we need to reduce this in other pages, we'll just have to call this nav thing. And it will automatically populate that with this nice SE icon and the text as well. And um, here is some logic, some quite simple logic for uh, showing this and also changing when the user is connected. So you redirect the user directly into the dashboard instead of showing login again. And that, I think, we made a small mistake. Sign in is um, login. I think this is English login. Yeah, and this is like this, okay. Okay, I think we need to make a mistake. Yes, let's sign in. I'll register, let's say register. Nice. So now when you click on register, you actually see the registration page and, uh, yeah, you can log in as well here. And, um, yeah. So how are those pages set up? Uh, I think we need to open our starter again. So sorry, I'll just show you how to set up the clock authentication. So that's the, that's simple as well. So the first thing you need to do, you can directly go to the documentation. It's pretty, yeah, pretty simple as well. You come here, I think it's in the documentation. After document docs. Yes, and uh, here you will have some framework to choose. You choose next yes, and then you have everything. You have to install. So we just do these. We come here and we install our cloud next yes. In the meantime, we'll have the keys. So we need to create an um, local. Um, that um, local. And we place our keys here. Um, here. Now we need to wrap our wall component here with the provider, with the clerk provider. So we need something like clerk provider. And it needs, well, okay, let's just do this first. Um, we need to return this clerk provider here. And this will be inside our clerk provider. And uh, we need to pass these props to clerk as well. Yes, and um, next thing is to create a middleware function. We just paste this into our middleware functions. We do middleware that is. Uh, by the way, this middleware is not proper. It's not for cloud. It's actually a middleware that next set built into Next.js. So whenever you want to create a middleware in Next.js, you create this middleware file here. It will actually handle all the incoming traffic. And uh, it's just like an actual middleware that you can have in the Express or whatever you want. So we can do whatever we want here without even having to use Clerk. So, but Clerk gives you this pretty nice uh, uh, utility function where you can specify which are your public routes, which routes are protected here. For example, everything related to API and TFPC are protected. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's say this is protected. And then we need to configure other things, which are the pages that, um, where, where is the login page, where is the registration page. Um, yeah, this user button as well, we can move it. It's just, just, I'll show it to you later. 
So we have um, some other create custom signing pages, and then yeah, you can create some kind of signing page like this. We need to do something like here, as we showed our blog, we need to create another thing called signing. I hope this can work. Next, create this. No, this is UF page folder, so it's this, yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully it works. Yeah, perfect. So it did it. So now we have this simple index page, if I'm not wrong, or it created the page or not. Oh no, it doesn't understood that one. Okay. So we need to create a sign in. And then into no. I thought it was a folder. So it's the latest folder and create a file instead called in the And in this file, you will have to paste this simple code here for the sign up. And uh, same for the sign in, it just gives you the whole component that you see here. Um, yes, you see here. This component here, or just this create thing here, it will give you this component that you can just customize and add some other things uh, here or here, depending. Yeah, so it depends. No, yeah, you actually need to do it this way, like this. Yes, so now you can add things here or or here and design it the way you want it to be. So it will provide that. And the next thing you need to do is come in this page and specify and tell to um clerk where you saved your login and registration page and you do that by using this environment or variable here and you just paste it here yeah you have the signing which is saying and there's a sign up which is sign up so if we do a yarn dive again hopefully it works um we're breaking something yeah oh we broke something uh you cannot define your role with the same specific and optional call what this um sign more where is our sign up page Oh, yeah, this should be here inside. Yeah, let's try it again. Okay, so I think we just go here. And if we go to sign up. You'll see a pretty weird thing. Oh, wait, uh, in our middleware, we need to specify that the sign up page is actually not protected. So here's everything is called sign up yeah so now if we go to our sign up again no not that one this one yeah i think it's maybe cash i'm not sure um yeah but in any case here is our page but i don't know why it's was disturbing on this page here maybe i'm an account or not um uh, yes, uh, I think I have an account. Oh, yeah. Mm. I've, I'm registered on this uh, local house here um, with another account. I think if you use the user button, let's just quickly check that. Yeah, if we just, you know, push the user button here. User, I think it's user button, right? Yeah. You will see that here. I'm logged in. Yeah, that's a, the that's a reason I was. I was. <laughs> yes, so, um, yeah, so now. Everything should be fine. It's just sign up. And then you see this weird sign up page. You can customize it the way you want it, but this single component will be managed by Clark. And um, yeah, you, you can create an account. You can, you know, you can choose all the provider you want in your dashboard. So let me show you. All right. Should be here. Uh, dashboard. The blah. Yeah. yeah. So maybe let's see. We don't want. Yeah. We exactly. This. Mm -hmm. Social connections, we can choose to have some, yeah, some GitHub, GitLab, Twitter, Microsoft, a lot of providers here. So we just have to choose. Um, This is the basic. I think that's all you need. Uh, You have the protected route, you have the unprotected route, you have the red direction when when you finish your login and yeah, everything. So I think the big route is nice right now. We can go back to our real code. So as you can see, it just closes, closes. Here we have, uh, I'm not sure I have an account with this. No, I have an account with this. Um, here we can have our page here. 
um, like this. Okay. So you can just register, um, like giving an email, something like this, and giving a password, and like, oh, nice, your password is not secure enough. Okay. Part of a pre I don't even know what the password is about. This, this, this um, something. And then we'll create an account for you with the same an email. Let me just check my email. I'm not here and uh, we copy this code here. And then it's secure. And then we are good to go. You are logged in. And uh, the after registration page is actually set up here into our end local. So we need to change this. So this will be uh, when you finish creating your account, we need to send you back to onboarding. Let me just show you the page. It's called onboarding language level. This this is the first step you need. You need to choose a language level and others. So let's just say when you finish creating an account, you need some customization. And when you finish signing up, it means you have created an account before. We need to send you to the assistant page. Uh, slash chat. And then let me show you assistant page. Assistant slash chat. It is this static page. Everything is static here for the moment. Even the click is not working. Even this, nothing is working here. It's just static pages. And um, yes, so those pages are here. We have this index page, as I was explaining, you have the nav component. Uh, we have yeah, the banner and here we have the sign up page, exactly as I explained. You have this uh, right thing here and you have our sign up component here. We have the sign in as well, um, just pretty simple. Just some divs, center the component and give some background um, colors. I think this background writing here. Or you can do writing with Taiwan pretty easily as well. Um, yeah, this background right in here. And then, yeah, we're good to go. Um, and then now we have this onboarding pages. They are pretty simple as well. They have language level here. We just have an array of language levels. And then, um, as you can see, uh, this component has really uh, same, the same, 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 same. So we needed to export it into um, an external component. If I'm not wrong, we have it here, onboarding, select box, it's our well, in here, it's just, yeah, just pretty simple. We pass the action that we need to perform when someone click on the, on the button. This action is actually here. Let me go back to the language table. I think for the moment, it's just nothing happening. So the action is just action in our action share should be an empty function. So we can just do something like when you click, just alert. Great. So when you will click here, it will say great. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's it. Anyway, this is just the word code. You don't really need to um, understand everything completely right now. What you can do is just sit down, uh, read a bit of the documentation. Next, yes, if you don't understand something, you can ask in the comment. I will be very happy to explain everything you want to understand. You can also come on the Discord. I always have people on Discord. So if you have any question about anything in the starter part, in this, this starter code, contact me on discord and i'll be really happy to help um and that's it let's get into the real work now we have the index page we have the navigation we have everything now we need to make some things work sweet so the first part here the front end is done right we have it in this starter part that you can just pull and uh, use right and i think uh yeah you can have the link to this video hopefully i will update this with the new uh, link to this new video and uh oh no yeah back here okay yes and this learning journey normally should land you here in this interface so let's start by um working on the customization of the onboarding flow right so let's go to onboarding language level right now when you click on it it just do what we just what we just yeah what we just said a few minutes ago so what we need it to do is to, um, I will just explain it in right here. Okay. So we have different customization levels. So we have here, we have the language level. We have the commitment. And we have the, I think if I'm wrong, the objective. Okay. Right. So what we want to do is, uh, this is a stepper. So we first choose the language level. 
then the commitment, then the objective, then the commitment. So what we want to do is to save this, the result from here, save it from here, and from this side here, from the commitment, now we send it to the back end, and the back end save everything, right? So um, we can start by filling up this action here, the action part here. What we want to do is to save this from this page, and then we'll go to another page and save the next, and then go to the last page and send it to the back end. And for that, we need something called local storage. Uh, so let's say from this level, what we'll save in the local storage is your language level. We'll save some field in local storage called language level, and then some field called objective. And then when we come here, we have language level, objective, and the commitment that you chose, we send it to the backend, the backend save it. Um, and uh, yeah, with your user profile, you can you can directly um, save some, some personalization thing related to your profile. So, Let's do that quickly. So the first thing is that um, on this onboarding select box, uh, we have item and item just come from this here. We have a list of items that we are looping through. Um, yeah, I really hope you understand what I'm doing right now. Um, yeah, so we have items here and we are looping over items and then yeah, we have onboarding and for each item. So it means we have the text here, the text of each item here. I am new to English, I know some words, I can, yeah, those kind of things. We have them here, so we pass it to action. So if we actually alert the value, you will see that um, this will say I'm new to English and this will say I'm an expert, right? So what we need to do is just save this into local storage, right? Local storage that set item. And uh, the value of this item is actually value and the uh, level, the key is actually English level. Language level. Okay, and that's it. We need to redirect after that to um, yeah, to uh, the next page. And for that, we need the router. And to need to use a router, we need something in next year's called if routers. Yeah, yeah. This so they just they just do it again. Uh, so you see how it goes. So you need to create a variable called router that we call the hook reviews router. Use router, and then you come here. You just router the push, push a new road, or new road is just onboarding slash uh, what mm, objective. Okay, so when will we click on this, let's let just clear. I think maybe with some test, I did. Uh, I need to clear my local storage. The clear. Ah, you clear some, yeah, clear whatever you want. Okay, so now if we do local storage, you will see that we just have some storage clear thing, right? Clear key. Um, by the way, don't share this key. If you really deploy this application, ROM your user not to share this JWD key because it is your identity key uh, that you can decrypt. And we want to, maybe we can show that quickly, JWT.io. Um, Come here and uh, hopefully paste your key here without this, right? And you have the algorithm, you have the the payload here, and you have the encryption thing. So this is used by Cloud to know that uh, this is this user. Um, yeah, when you send a request, when you authenticate, all those, those kind of things. So if you copy this and paste it on the browser, you may think you are actually the same person. So you are someone else, and you are not, right? Um, yeah, so um, then then let me share your GWC. Anyway, so if you click on I'm new to English, you see, oh, sorry, we didn't log in, so let Oh, and I forgot my password, I think. Um, I think I, log in. I need to log in back to Google. Yeah, and if you see here, uh, let me see if I put the right thing here. It's really long, nice. Okay, so it redirected me to my return page, so now. So if we go here and do local storage again, you see that we have language level, I'm new to English, okay? And if you click on boost my career now, nothing will happen because the action of this page is not set up, okay? So we have this action here, it will be like the same thing, pretty much the same thing. We have a uh, language here, um, here, it's actually the same action because it is actually the same component. We actually have the same onboarding select flow. That's the power of component. So you can use the same thing everywhere. You have this same thing here, this same thing here. And if, for example, we want to no, no, no. Let's say I'll change the width to 50. 
it wouldn't be nice, but yeah, let's say we want that. We do that indeed updating all the pages where we have the components, but let's go back to our 24. 24 is better. And then now um, with this new act, um, action here, we have our I'm a neutral language. Mate. When I click, I, I do this just for fun. Oh, sorry. I think we need to set up this here to go into the objective. You go to commitment. Okay. But if I click on it, you will see that the local storage is populated with the new value. So if you come here, you will see language level. Uh, your... No, 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 no. Oh, I think uh, this is not language level. This is objective. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to language level. And start the flow again. So here, and clear our browser so you see the complete flow. So now, when you do local source, there's nothing here. But if you re reload, you will see you will get your 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 clear GWT key. Click on this. You click on this. Shoop. Yeah, nice. So you have here. Let's go back to our language table and start over again. So you click on new to English. Okay, nice. It sends you back here. And if you come here and do local source, you will see that language table. I'm new to English, and then you click. I'm doing this just for fun. It sends you to the next page, and then here you will see. Uh, I'm using English and objective just for fun, right? And then the last part here is just to choose your commitment, right? We will not implement the commitment mechanism to notify you that you need to learn today, you know, the, the, the Julingo thing, but let's just save it for later use, right? Um, and in that case, we need actually the same function. It's actually the same component, right? So we just need the same function in the commitment page here. Okay. Um, but now we'll push to assistant chat. And um, what we will have to do is to build an object. Uh, the object will be called first user. Let me just bring in so we can see everything. Preferences. Sorry. It's equal to this. So we have language. That will be local storage. Let's get item of language level. Yeah. And this will be a uh, objective. Same name. Yeah. We don't need this anymore. And this will be commitment. And this commitment will just be our new value, right? The new value we just clicked on here. No, not sure. Yeah. And this user prefers we can lock it. Okay. I just say, um, we comment this and it comes with a User preferences. So if you click on this, let's just clear this. If you click on this, you will see this whole object, okay, with all the customization thing for the user. So this, this, and this, change to this. And then, then what we want to do here is to send this back to the backend, right? And to send this back to the backend and make sure the backend save it, we need backend road, right? We need a backend API that can actually do that. Right, okay, so let come here and to create a backend into Next.js is pretty simple. You can find the call API and you have your backend, right? And you don't have your backend. So um, let's create an, something called um, what? Uh, oh no, let's let just test it. So user and then the save preferences. But this, okay, here. Um, so let's just copy the, where is it? Um, next year's API template, API reference, no, no, not this one, um, did I? API roads, yes, so I think we have something like this, let's just copy it. And place it here. Okay. So this will send you a response like something. And you can do some custom backend related things here. So let's just say we are not returning something. We are just returning something in here. We can read note the moment. And um yeah. What we what what we want to do is to set up a database, right? We want to set up a database and uh, use the database to save to save some things, right? 
and for that we need some packages so for the moment we'll do the database part offline because we want to have two different applications right we want an application that can run completely offline with completely offline models without having to deal with a uh, connected database or whatever so we can use sqlite in that specific case and to have sql in our and to have sqlite in our application we need to install two modules we need sqlite 3 that is the um, SQLite itself, and we need SQLite package that is um, the wrapper around SQLite to help us um, manage, um, um, interact with SQL quickly. And I think it's already here. We have SQL, SQLite and SQLite 3, right? And if you go to the documentation of this, you just need to type npm SQLite, and you will see SQLite and SQLite 3. So it's open this and this. Yep. So SQLite 3, as you, when you can see here, it's just like the the binary thing uh, that you can use um, if you want, you can just directly use JAPI. But if you want an asynchronous and simple, easy way to interact with this SQLite thing, you need to SQLite package itself here, right? Um, yeah, so that's it. And so let's quickly create a lib file here, a lib file in our pages, components. This is to bit and a lib, no, no, not in components. Lib and you know, lib we just create something called SQLite. It will be our connection to the database, right? Okay, and uh, for that, we need to come here, copy this code here somehow. And um, yes, so this is um, open the database, yeah. Okay, so uh, and for the road, we just need to have it in the that correct database. The DB, okay. And uh, yeah, this will create a database. And here we have the simple function to open the database. I think we need to export this function. We don't want it this way. We first need to do a cause open db score to this. And it's not immediately invoked. So we just need and it is part here. Okay. So we have a function. We can call it from the external world, from external packages actually open our database so in the meantime let's just create a simple configuration for some uh, migrations so that we can run the migrate the gs file create migrate the gs file we don't really need much from this and this migrate the gs file would contain all migrations i think they have the migration templates over here where you kind of specify where you yeah your migration path this is the way so we need to do something like this um i think we need to get this out of this so that it's organized a bit better i mean it's migration and then inside migrations we have this and we have um no no let got it got a base and then migrations okay and in this migration we have this await oh, we migrate I think DB will come from, yeah, I think it's the same here, uh, from this open DB here. So when it comes here, we need to actually use this function. So let me call it here, let's say, uh, I think we need an imp immediately invoke function here. Yes, it is. And uh, yeah, call it. So now we can do this. Um, yep, and then we can just say call cv square to open open db. Did I export it? No, okay. To export this, um, okay, let's say normally now we should be able to get this open db. Okay, so let's just import. No, that's the abstract. No, that wouldn't work. So it's better to directly open it that way because we have JavaScript here, we have that on, on the other side. So let's just do this like this. Yeah, we have the same file now. Instead of this, we get a bit. And uh, yeah, we should have it. Nice. Um, now we can, uh, we don't want these. We want the immigration path. 
about to be something that I I mean under first which first of all um immigrations. And this can go as well. Yeah, nice. Okay, and inside migration, we can start creating our migrations, right? And uh, our migration format is actually quite simple. Yes, and inside our migrations, we can create uh, some migrations for for day uh, ten. Create a user. Preferences. But I can do it all. No, I think it should be just that DB, I think. If I'm not wrong, no, but let's go. Yeah. yeah. This is our migration here. And then now we can just call this migrate straight. So let's go to a terminal, create a new terminal. Go to uh, do a node um, database uh, and immigrate. Yes. Uh, open is not defined. It's, oh, yeah. Cross to open is not defined. It's open is from this is right here. And you need to import those two files as well into our migrate streets. Okay. I run it again. Uh, can that use imports as sort of a module? So we need to add module to our work. Back to season. So we can use required. Uh, yeah, let's just use required. Uh, don't save. Um, okay, const. SQLite tree is required to required. SQLite tree, simple. SQLite, required SQLite. Okay, no such file directory. Um, double line migration. So I think we need to go into database here. It's doing that based on where you call the strip. So it's database and migrations. Yeah. And that's done. So if we go back to, I think we need database somewhere. Um, here we have the SQL here. We should have a database, but it's too far because, yeah. So I think we need to do this like this. So we have it at least in the same folder here. So now we have this, where is it? This database somewhere here. Yeah, this is our database, our SQLite database. We can, of course, use the SQLite model. I don't think it's, yeah, we need to start it first and then go into the database and then create the table and yeah. So I just wanted to have it in migration so we have like a way to actually iterate over the changes that we can do in the database. So um yes, so this database here we need to change from our lib component. Yeah, yeah, it's our lib component. I think this shouldn't be that way, it should be the way like this. Okay. So now in our SQLite in our API. So it is a preference. Now we can call const db is equal to open db. Nice. And we need to await this. And in that case, we need this to be an async function. Not before. And then now we can do uh, db dot, dot prepare. And then here you will have our SQL uh, syntax. I think if I'm not wrong here, yeah, that should be, yes. So why is the next type deployed? Let me just add, I think we have returning that it is, we don't need to do this. Yes, so now, good, we can do a prepare on it. Nice. And uh, I think it will be a lot of SQL syntax here. So the best way is just to create a function into our SQLite here called maybe, or can we call it um, just export cons save preferences. Let's see for this. 
it will be an async function because we'll have to open the database and, and things. So we have open db is equal to open open db await cross await open db. Then now we can do our prepare statement and everything around it. So let's do a const statement is equal to await db prepare and uh, what we want to do is to, to insert into our database let's say uh i think let me check again database integration let's calculate user preferences to insert into user preferences um yeah and then we do something like this okay what do we need uh i think we need to link that to the user so we need the user id um what else uh, we need the commitment level first no let, let we start language level uh, let me check again immigration language level objectives and coming here yes and then we have values now the values are just question mark because we are doing a prepare query here. Okay, so let's discern. And then when we have the prepare statement, what we need to do is just to await the result. So we need to do const result is equal to, we need to execute our, our statement. Await cross um, statement that run. And then you need to pass the values. So this function will have to get into parameters um, a lot of data. So they just call it um, preferences data. That will be of type. We need user ID, which is a string. We need commitment. We need language level, which is a string. We need Commitment, which is a string, we need uh, objective as well, which is a string. Okay. Nice. So now we can replace the values that we have. And uh, we have one by one, so we start preferences that user ID and then preferences at language level, preferences, what's it? Preferences that, um, what's the next objective? And then preferences at uh, commitment. Okay. So that's what we will get. And uh, we can run down this result. But let first um, do a uh, wait statement that's finalized and we on the result but before returning the result we need to wrap this uh, to make sure that we can handle all the error that comes in and uh, whenever something happens we can directly maybe close the database or some kind of transactional thing but in any case it's just to try and touch and in this try here, nice, we have everything here. But if you have an error, we just log the error first. It's already done, no, console dot error, error. And then uh, finally, what happens is that we need to close the database. So we just do await db dot close. Dot close. I think I will have to put the db. Um, I'll have to do something a bit different and uh, let's send a console let and I think the type of this should be database from this guide and then we can come here and just do this like this so that it's not a it's not a scope related function anymore and then um, yeah we can just do close now and it will work because this because this db node here is not scoped anymore. Okay, that's nice. And then um, 
now here instead of doing the world query here and, and everything we just do uh const uh response she called to save preferences and here we'll pass some data and this data will come from the body so we first you need the user id and this user id we can get it from the um, uh, from clock so i think we can use clock in the back end as well um, to retrieve the user id and for that we need a specific hook um called here because we need something like user um yep id uh, and then let's just let's say const user id is equal to get hold um in in, in um yep get hold in the app router it's different you don't need this get hold anymore i think you, you need to get user but in this specific context we need to get hold um it's saying uh let me check again self reference need Reference it out, tell the user ID that's a string. Yes, and now user ID that's a string. And she's saying maybe this is not a string, so we need to, to, yep, yeah, false. I need to do it like this, to spread this, okay? Okay, so we need to do something like this. Okay, nice. So now it's not the same image this, okay? Um, Now we need commitment level, we need language level. And this will come from requested body, the language they will, okay. They just duplicate this and uh, say objective and um, commit now. And then you delete this. Nice. We have this running and then you just return the response. Okay. So we can test this with Postman, uh, but we don't have an account. So it's better to just see directly via our website. So we go to the embodying page again. I think it was commitment. And then here we have the language level, we have the commitment. So what we need to do is just do a const response is equal to await. Oh, we just do it then. Oh, okay. Await axios track post to API user um, save preferences. Nice. And then the data, it is a uh, user nice. And then we can do this as an async function, or we can just await it here. So let's say async, yes. And then we'll drop this into a crane catch to catch all possible errors. Cancel that error, error. And then yes, we have this like this. Okay, let's test it, okay. Uh, I think we're not pushing. Yeah, perfect. Let's go back to our page. Where is it here? And yep. Yeah. And then if you click on this, we have this, of course, and we have in our network tab, the safe preference request that comes with an, an empty response. So the period of this like, commitment language level objectives, and we have an empty response. Okay. Let's check. Um, here, safe preferences. Are we returning something? Yeah, we're returning the value, the result. I think. Let's see what's happening here. Click again. And in our terminal here we have, um, yeah, nice. Um, yeah, so it's inserting the values properly. I don't know why it's not sending back to the front end, but anyway, it's inserting this value properly. Uh, let me check if we have a fault here. No, we have the result. We are sending the result. And, uh, Ah, yes. All right. Yeah, we need this. So normally, if you click again, it's just saving it every time. So we have it now. Uh, so if we go into the database, you will see a lot of these items that I'm creating right now. So uh, what you can check is actually if we are getting the user ID properly. So um, normally, we shouldn't get here without the user ID. So normally, we have a user ID because this middleware will block every request that does not have uh, an, uh, an authenticated user. So we shouldn't get through this. 
read out and the user ID. So that's that's not a problem. So now let's create a new function in our SQLite that will be get references. So we just select um, the preferences based on the user ID. So what we get are um, we will need it for the chat part. So we get uh, references. All we need is just the user ID that's a string. And in this get user ID, we actually have the same pattern, it's just that the request here changed. We need something different. We need a select everything from user preferences. Yeah, let me just copy it again. User preferences where user ID is equal to this. Okay, and then we will run it with user ID. Nice. Um, so instead of run, we just do a normal get, and then uh, yeah, finalize, and then we return the result. Nice. Um, now we will use this data. Um, the thing we need to do here is just to where is it again? Wait, no. To push to the assistant when everything's right. So I, so we just need to do something here. Um, when we get the right response, you push the user to the assistant. And this router, we need to use it. Router is equal to use router. Yes. And that's nice. So uh, when we reach this part, we'll just click on 10 minutes per day, so we do everything, and then we'll direct back. Yeah, assistant chat, chat. Let me just see the assistant chat. Yeah, that should be right. Page could not be found. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and S here. So let's go back and then click is here again. So that is to the right page. Right. So now what we need to do is uh, actually simple. We have these profiles here. We have this different profile. We need to create a prompt for each of these profile. If you go to the um, chat here, you will see that you have different uh, keys for each person. So we can have uh, this description as a prompt or a new field called prompt. And uh, that will help us send a prompt based on the user um, yeah, the user profile we have. Like this would be a professor, this would be a cool children, this would be a score of someone going to school, for example, this would be a baby. So if you want to talk to one of these people, you need to change um, the perspective you need to change the way that the LLM talk to them, and uh, for that we need to. We'll just do something pretty simple right now. Just add a prompt value here. So let it do that properly. Okay, this way just select Control D if you don't know, and then end, and then and end. Okay, we add end here. Just do this, and then we add a new field called prompt. But normally it will be empty, right? I think for the description we forgot to add the yeah, we had this twice. And here, okay, let's add it and just remove it here. Okay. And this prompt here will just fill it with values, right? This will be um you are professor. I don't know, uh no, that like this. You are a cool children. Um, you are a student, and uh, you are a eight-year-old baby, right? Oh, no, like this. You are. Wait, let's just go back. Eight years old, baby. Okay, and what we need to do here, we have this conversation with this initial initial message here. That is the one we are seeing here for the moment. And what we need to do is just to get the message from here, and then send, and then it shows a bubble here in this bubble. Um, the content of the bubble and the response will just paste it in the left side. So that should be simple. That should be simple. We have this list of characters here. Um, 
Yeah, so let's just go down there. I hope you can see. Yeah, I think this is better. Oops, you can see again. Um, yes, so we have the set bubble here. So we can do something pretty simple. If, if we do this and we do this, uh, just to show you the configuration that we have, um, they will have the same keys. So that's the problem. I think if I'm not wrong. I don't know. No, 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 no. We need one thing. Otherwise, we need to wrap it into another higher order component. But anyway, just to show that if you put this to left or to right, it will show you the left or the right about the chat bubble. So just, just, just to let you know. Um, and for here, we need to keep the value of this input because it's the input that we need to type into. The values are actually this way, but we need to create a state for that. So they just do cons. Um, message set message is equal to your state of nothing for the moment. So we come back here in the input. I'll just open it again and just paste down. Okay. Um, here we have the input. Instead of this value, we need to give the value message and on change. We just do something like this. We need the E value and we do set message e the target the value. Yes, so now we can do this. We can type into our thing. So now what we need to do is just the submit field. We have a form here, a form, if I'm not wrong. Let me check for a form. There we have a form. And this form, we need to uh, bind an action when we submit it. So if you submit it right now, it will load the page. So what, that is not what we want. So we do unsubmit, not transform, but submit. And we'll call it handle um, form submission. Ah, yep. And then you come up here, we create this new function. Cast and the form. Submission it will get E as the, the element that we are that we want to have at the moment and we'll do a prevent default on it. Prevent default to avoid loading the page first. And then what we'll do is just uh, alert the message that we are trying to send. So we first see which value we have. So if you do this and you do uh, I am a message. We do this, we'll get our message at the top here. So the only thing we need right now is first to send the message. Okay. Send the message to the backing. And then clear the input field. And that's for the clear on the input field. It's pretty simple. We just need to do this. It's done. So you should do it again. When you finish, it's cleared. Okay. For sending the message to the backend, we need a new route in our API route. You need to come here again in the API, not user, but API, and create a new file called chat.ts. And this chat will have nearly the same structure as this one. Um, so let's copy and paste. And uh, we need the user ID, of course, and we need to get preference instead of save preference. Get preferences. And we just need user ID. Right? Just need user ID. I think we pass it directly true without object. No, not too much. And you still need this because it can be normal. Yeah, nice. And um, what do we need right now when, when we have this response? We can just test, right? We can just test first. They just return the response, right? Return the response, and then we can add it to our chat flow here. So we do a simple const response. Let's do it right in test first. And we'll just const response is going to await axios of so, CPI slash chat. And um, 
we pass the message. We'll need to pass the prompt as well, but that's later. We need to post it. There's a post. And uh, this needs to be an async function. And if there's an error, you just absolutely love the error. Okay, nice. So now, if we come here again, we open our network tab, network, and then we try to send a message. Send a message. You will see that after the alert, we have a chat that is sent, and the response is actually our preference that we have saved with the user ID. Right, so we can prevent, we can add these preferences to the chat and uh, send it back to our model. But to send something to the model, uh, let's just delete this first. To send something to the model, we need uh, Olama. As I mentioned before, I did a tutorial about Olama on the channel. Um, I will just link the description, the video in the description. I, I did two videos, the one on how to run Copilot on your own computer, the second on how to run Jima on your own computer. All of them show you how to set up and run uh, Olama on your own computer. So I will link them in the description. But I will just show you quickly um, how it can be done. You just need some simple Docker Compose file that you can have on my GitHub or also you just do Olama with your eye. You end up here and on this page you have this Docker Compose files here. And using Docker Compose, you can run the Docker Compose normal here. And you will have the Olama running or the Docker Compose API here as well to expose the API on this specific port. So I already have it. Uh, it's starting right now. Lacking a bit, but yeah, it's starting. And in the meantime, what we need to do is to use the Olama API, right? We have an Olama package for the front end as well. Uh, and this Olama package is actually pretty simple to use as well. So let me just show you how we will integrate it into our, our project. Okay, so the thing we need to do here is to do a conversation is equal to um, like this. We need to specify our system prompt. And for that, we need to do role system. It's exactly as the uh, GPT API, um, just that you do it and you get um, the response from a local model. And then now we need a content. The content is actually our prompt. So our prompt will be you, um, we can change that letter to write much more complicated things and update the use case that we have. But now we'll just say you are an English tutor, right? An English tutor. Um, yes. Um, and, uh, I'll just add here the prompt that will be a from request that body that prompt so we can get it from the chat here with the prompt that we have. So we need message and we need prompt as well. And to get the prompt, it can be a bit more complicated, right? Uh, because we need to know what is the current person that we are chatting with, but we'll send that uh, let's say for a moment, say prompt is um, you are nice, okay? And you are nice. We will fill that up later. And then we need to give some other data, preference data to the model, right? Like, uh, you are a teacher, um, this is my language level, this is, this is, this is, and this is. So, and for that, we, it would be much more better to have a template engine like this. And we do this. Yep. And we replace this by yeah. Okay. So now we can easily go here and say, um, this is your student preferences. And then we say um, language level. If I'm not wrong, if I'm right, I think we have uh, directly from yeah, language level from the response that we get here. So we can do response at language level. Uh, response. Um, yeah. Dot language level. 
commitment uh, objectives. Objectives commitment, nice. And uh, yeah, we can do much more things. So what we can do as well is just to have some fallback values here. So instead of having this like this, we have something like this, like a test. Yeah, and we have some default value. Um, so we have here response dot language level. If we have the response, we have response to language level. Otherwise, we have some other um, fixed value. So, which means if the user doesn't have any, resp any, any um, if there was a problem saving the user preference or whatever, we at least have uh, a fallback case that will give some generic, um, yes, some generic values to this, to this thing. So let's say, um, beginner commitment every day, just some random values, um, objectives. Just for fun. Okay. So now this conversation is our system from that we'll be sending to Olama, right? I think if I go back to the Docker, we have our copilot here. We have the Olama web UI and we have the Olama. And uh, when you run this Docker Compose, you can come, but I think maybe the, yeah, the easiest way for me to show you will be to show you this exposed port here. Uh, I think. Yeah, it's clashing with my internal port, so I need to run it again. Um, let me see if I can bind it to another, another port. So let's just stop my port here. But in, in, in any case, we don't really need it that much. Um, I just wanted to show you that we can actually um, have a, a place where we can download models, but you can see it from the video I will put in the description. So I don't think it's really necessary right now. So only thing we need to do is just to connect to the Olama itself, not the web UI, but the Olama, this, this here, this is the important part. Um, yes. And, um, you know, we'll, we will be able to send some requests to the Olama Docker image and then get the response. And, um, And for that, we need the Olama module. And for, I think we already have it in our package JSON file here. So the only thing we need to do is just to create an instance of it. So now we have the case, and then we will have also uh, the rest of the conversation that will pass all the way around. So it's not a problem right now. Um, but what we have here is just to, what we need to do is just create this instance of Olama, which is a new Olama. Yeah, perfect. And uh, this new Olama need to uh, get a host. Oh, sorry, get a host. And this host will be localhost uh, with this part one one four three four. So we need HTTP localhost. One one four no one one four one one four three four one one four three four okay and then uh now we can get some response uh message is equal to await Olama dot chat And uh, here we need to pass the model that we want to use. Yes, this would be a parameter letter, right? We will be able to choose our, our model, but for the moment we have downloaded model. I have the certain the two B model, two B environment model, but it's Olama the Gemma two B environmental model, and that's the one we will be using. Uh, and uh, here just need messages, and this message will be uh, an area of conversation. So first we need this prompt the system prompt, and then we'll get the rest of the conversation from the front end. So we need to request that body dot conversation. All right. Okay, nice. And then we send back this message. Okay. If we come here, yeah, you're very nice. 
you know, so we need to conversation. So for that, we need to create a state call. I think we have it already. We have conversation here. Okay, nice. So um, all we need is to get to put this into a state. Yes. Okay. When we have this, we can actually, uh, for the characters, I think we need also, uh, for the moment, we just leave it when so I said, we have to set convex create we need to just stage here. Yeah. And now we can set the conversation. So it means when you are sending the message here, or we can um, set uh, the conversation before sending it back to the user. So which means right here, we first do a set conversation. Um, we need to still get the whole conversation, but we need to add it with this new role user and then content message. And it's just going to the top response here to first see what we are getting response of data. Okay, so if you do this, um, hi, you would feel like to send this and uh, we have an error here. Let's check. What is the issue? Conversation. Are we sending conversation or not? No, we are sending prompts with everything but conversation. Conversation as well. Okay. So. Let's say again, A, and then our chat is pending, sending back response to, um, yeah, to, oh, nice. We have a model, we have the Gmail, we have the message, and we have the content. Hi, I'm happy to help you. So that's the response from the AI. Uh, nice to get it. Um, what we need now is just to um, use that back in our front end. And um, so we have message message okay so change let's change it here so to, to avoid this redundancy we can call it um response that's a message so we can do response at message right so uh from the data that we get here if we check our console we'll see that we have oh no not that one here yeah, we have it here message and then in message we have message so now we'll have response so what we need to do here is uh, we'll do set conversation and then we'll still get the whole conversation uh, the new old user I think we need to save this into a variable so we can use it twice um, calls actual conversation so call to this and then we can set actual conversation here same actual conversation and then uh, we need a new field or a new object. Oh no, we don't need a new object. We just need response to data because it's actually have the, the, the format, uh, message, role, and content. So we don't need that much changes. That uh, response dot that message. I think it's the response of message, right? The response at all, because they added message. Yes, let's test and see what we get. Uh, we load this again. And he said, hi, how can I help you? And we say, hey, what are we getting? Let's work. We are getting the response and we are getting sheets here. That's nice. So we can get the response from the AI already. Uh, we can converse with the AI. It's saying, oh, I'm here to make your English journey enjoyable. How can I? Oh, but nice. So we can have this, and this is from Gemma. You will see how fast is it look. So let's see. Let, uh, let's continue. Let's say, um, um, I want 
to learn numbers. See, I, we already have a, a response here. Oh, let me check. I think I didn't. Hopefully, I can log it. Yes, we have it here. Response schema. Let me say assistant. Did I say something? Let me check again my logs on the model. Okay, understand. Uh, basic arithmetic operations. No, pronounced. Pronouncing. Numbers in English. Okay, so why do we have empty responses? We'll have to check that. Yeah, but anyway, we first have this response from our AI. We are able to get um, our object what we are sending back to the AI. So maybe we have some problems there, but we will debug that and see where the problem comes from. Uh, conversation, yeah, okay. In any case, we'll see. So we are able to talk to our AI right now. We still have a lot of things to do, like changing, switching between these personas, uh, making it possible to just talk to the model, uh, having a feedback server where we can say, okay, you wrote something right or not, reading our response, and also um, making the model more interesting, more accurate. So maybe fine tuning the model to make it more accurate, uh, right? So that's our things that we will do in a upcoming section of the video. Uh, I hope you enjoy the long video so far. It's really long, uh, but yeah, we'll come. We will go through the rest of the tutorial in the upcoming part of the of the formation. So, let's see you in the next part of the video. Hello. So, uh, welcome back. So, in this part of the video, I will show you how to run Open Web UI in Olama to be actually able to uh, pull models um, and um, have them in your local machine, any open source model that you may want to run. So first thing you need to have is uh, in the stop plus data when you pulled it, you have the Docker Compose file here. And this Docker Compose file <coughs> contains all the image you need. So we need Olama, okay? And um, for now, if you don't really need uh, to get through um, all the... Uh, <coughs> the UI part of things, you can actually run command inside Olama Docker and pull Olama images. Uh, but yeah, we will need Olama and we'll need Open Web UI as well. If you want a web UI to interact with these models and test how good they are and have this chat GPT like interface to communicate with your models. So um, when you download this tool, when you download this file, actually, it's pretty easy to run uh, Olama or um, yeah, well, am I in what open your UI? Just come to your folder and you do you go to the terminal and you do a simple Docker compose. I think if you have Docker compose, this Docker compose up, and uh, it will launch the image again. But I think right now it wouldn't because you know. I already have it in my computer, but let's see. So right now what it's doing is like it's pulling the image from the internet and um, it's extracting it to run the images. But I think right now I have those two images in my computer already. So no need for yeah, a response board unavailable uh, because it's already used. Ah, yeah. um, I think the problem comes from here actually, from our... Yeah, our chat here. Our chat is using the port 9000. So what you can do is actually open this. Uh, let me just quickly open it. And um, change the exporting port here. So let's say 1000, 5000. Okay, and run this again. Yeah, it's perfect. So when you visit your com your browser and go to Local House 5000. Uh, yes, so. Uh, actually, when you first launch the project and create an account, um, you are the administrator of your account. And then when other people create accounts, they need to um, 
be verified by you uh, before you actually, yeah, you know, here, for example, we can give access to this user um, to use our platform or not to just let the user with any need. That needs right here. So what you can do is actually have this nice thing here where we can pull images and test them. Um, it, they will pull it, these images will be directly pulled into Olama here into this Olama here, and then when you will, this is just an, an interface to Olama. So this open UI here is just interface for this Olama. So Olama is the right um, tool to help you run models locally and communicate with these models and yeah, this API REST that they expose. So, um, yeah, you can use this to download new models, um, settings, models, downloads. You put the model you want here, you download it, and hopefully it works on your computer. So now that's done, we can go back to what we were doing. Yeah, so here, let's close this, this two. Yes. So we have here, if we say hey again, normally this should go to back and this is pending because uh, there's no response for the moment. I think we have to remove this. We need to remove uh, or to um, do this exactly um, yeah, when we just finished sending the message. So let's first fix that quickly. The comment chat here, go on the top um, here. And uh, where do we clear it? We just set message to this and then we need to do it before. So it feels like, and we need the loader as well, but let's, let's do that later. Um, yeah. So now it's good. Uh, we have this, but you like to work. So they basically look at the render mount. And as you can see, we still have this error here, this empty part here. So that may have uh, different um, reasons. We may have different reasons to that. And we need to debug that from the query that we sent to the backend. Just to it's by five, not need. Um, here. So what we need to do is actually to block this and see what's happening. So we do a constant block of this, so we can see what happened when we send a new message. So we're getting a right message right now. And if we check our console, we have here the whole conversation. We have um, the system prompt, uh, or the, no, this is not the system prompt, this is um, response from the database uh, for the user preferences. And then here we have the system prompt saying you're an English tutor and you're nice. Um, this is, I'm new to English, just for fun, and this and this and this, okay. Um, and then here we have the assistant. How can I help you today? The user that says, hey, and then the assistant that says a lot of things and the user and the assistant that just responds with an empty response. So we need to fix that. It means, it means from this side, everything is right from the, um, um yeah, data that we send back. So this should be okay normally. Um, I need to check if we have, uh, we have assistant and we have user, I think. So I need to check again. Yes, exactly. Born user, All right. So we are right here and uh, we have uh, all this. Okay, nice. So the problem does not come from this, maybe from the prompt then. Um, let's just enforce the model from the front point of view uh, to send non empty responses. So So to try it again. Okay, this sounds like a good idea. I will love to improve my basic. Uh, I'm basically interested in learning about. Uh, can you give me some example and exercise you said that you could do to help me with this? Uh, this doesn't make any sense. So let me just restart the conversation and let uh, me see how far it goes. Okay. Hey, um, I want to learn new words. 
So this is pending. Uh, I'm here to make you learn in front of I'm flexible with the amount of time you can dedicate to your um, learning, you say. So let me know how much you like to do and we'll find a way to make it work for you. Remember, okay, good. Um, you can also work on drama. Let's work on, let's work on vocabulary. Okay, this is still an empty response. So let's find out why we are getting an empty response from the model. Oh, um, yes, I think I understand right now. Uh, I think there's a problem here. This should be, uh, I'm, I, I think it's not getting yet work on the vocabulary. Yeah. For which reason she's not getting that? Or maybe it's over or it's like, uh, okay. So maybe we have this, uh, I want let's work on vocabulary. Where is it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sending it back as well. Uh, we have this conversation and we have to push for this conversation. Let me quickly check. So it makes sense to return empty response because the model is not getting our uh, user role um, request about okay, let's work on the vocabulary. So it means I'm getting in for message, not from conversation. So normally we need to fix that uh, because I'm just sending conversation back to the model. So we go to chat. Um, here we have a uh, message and prompt and conversation. So what you have to do is just send actual conversation instead of conversation. And uh, we remove message from the list. So we have here like this and we do conversation. Yeah, like this. Okay, this should normally solve for a problem. So it wasn't a prompt problem, it was mainly um yeah, a coding problem. So let's say um hey, I want to learn new words again. Sure, I would, this was really fast. What kind of word are you interested in learning today? Common word used in France. Okay. Yeah. So this should be right here. Sure. Yeah. So come on, what you can learn. You can learn. Hello. How are you? What's your name? I hope it helped. Let me know if you have any other questions. Um. Anyway, so this look okay for the moment. This looks nice. So what we need to do right now is um, make it possible to choose between these different people here, these different heads. So I make this enemy, write prompt for them and then give them like, um, some kind of so when you click on one person, it actually gives you something pretty useful. So we'll do that. And we also need to write to work on the feedback server and uh, maybe at the same time work on the text to speech server. And then we are quite done with the project. So let's first start by making this dynamic. Just not that complicated. So let's just do this that way and close this so you can see clearly what's going on here. Okay. So what we have here is a list of characters, right? A list of characters. And what we need to have is at each given point, the index of the actual selected character so we can retrieve all the information we need for this character. So what we need right now is to create a new a new state called um, character, character index and the set character index. It was to use state. Let's say it's zero for the moment, okay? And we use this character index actually to here. I think we are using it somewhere here. Um, characters, and then for the active here, we are doing character index is equal to index. Um, so that when you click on zero, the zero is activated. When you click on one, the one is activated. Uh, this is like the active thing when you see the white part, this little white thing here. I think you see it well. This little white thing that you see that this part is selected or not. Um, yeah, that's done. So now we need a way to select it. So when we click on the someone profiles, we need to set set character index to index. Okay. Yes. So that's done. So let's try it out. Okay. This is here selected. Yeah, this is selected. This is selected as well. So now we need to change these guys here, these parameters. So I think that's pretty simple as well. We, we, we just replace this zero by the character index, character index, and then character index. I think we need to do it at the bottom here as well. Yes, um, here, here, and uh, here, and then we are good to go, okay? 
right now you can see so if you click here change changed we change so what we need is super customize this so we'll, we'll just say um replace this destruction text of these characters by real destruction we can ask that to our opening our ai to help us with that part so let's just go to olama uh look at 5000 Then just choose the amount to begin parameters. Hopefully, we have a good response. Replace the description with uh, various and um, different English tutor um, descriptions. Okay, we have a resilient processor, a resilient no. no. Not at all. We're not getting something right here. Um, resilient. Oh yeah, I think it's changing things. Driven by question by morality of the quest. Seek vengeance, but it's just writing it, so it's not good enough. I think this two million parameter is not good enough to understand this kind of this kind of uh, queries. So let's try to reach GPT directly and see. Maybe we'll see the the difference. Um, yeah, I think we can copy it up here. We need it. So we go to the GP team. And then we ask that. Now we should get something pretty nice. An English tutorial with a passion, a decision to go extremely good. So we just copy this. Um okay, let, let's say replace the prompt as well with well crafted prompts for each file go oh, nice so we have our context here so we just paste it here so we have it here okay so now what we need to do is actually to um um, change the way we select the, we select uh, characters and also send this prompt back um, to the backend. So we have your nice here, but instead of your nice, we'll just do characters of character index uh, the prompt. Okay, so the prompt will be sent back to the backend whenever we yeah we send something a request or something. So and uh, we need to create a new function select profile. So we have to do set character index to index. So we need to get the index. Yeah, parameter is here. Thing is in number. Okay. And then the last thing we need to do is to clear the chat, right? So we just do a uh, set conversation to this um, to this initial state here. Okay. So we do a set conversation to this. So what happens now when you click on a new profile here is that uh, we have this, oh, that's too long, I think. We need to make it short. Uh, shorten the description. Oh, nice. Let's passage here and see how it fits uh, how it fits into the UI here you know better not quite good better seeking from vengeance of the uh, season tutor and back in Jennifer Green after clicking is scrolling they are really fictional characters so I mean I think we need to make it short again make the description short and realistic Some are still too long, I think. Let's just get it in the guest. Yeah, look better, right? So now what happened is that we have this selected and we change everything here. And we say, hello, we'll see how far, how different this hello will be based on the prompt that we send back to the backend. So uh, we have here, Professor, it's an honor to be invited to speak at your conference. I said, the vengeance of I think the prompt is fried bad right now. 
first justice is a central concern and they are pretty weird. So let, let's go back to another profile. Oh, this is not working. Um, yeah, we need to send to call the function here. Um, it's called uh, set profile. I think set profile. Turn it around. Select profile. Yes. So right now, if you select something, it will just clear everything, right? Okay. So if we say hello here, if we say hello here. I think it would be something pretty weird as well because we have this creep thing, fate, grabbing. I'm excited. Morality is about what we do and our actions, justice about. Okay, so what we can see here is that the better we give the prompt, we write the prompt, the better the world personage will be, the world um, character will be. There are a few things in key difference between morality and justice. And let's begin with okay. Anyway, so we have this part where, you know, this seems okay. So now let's work on the feedback server, right? So it means when you write something like uh, I am learning like this, the mother should, should say something like, uh, you shouldn't write learning that way. So we need to create a new route. We have the chat here and we need the feedback route. So we just duplicate this and make it feedback. Okay. And uh, in this big feedback, the only thing we need to change is the prompt, right? Uh, we'll say something like you uh, or an expert English teacher, you correct student mistakes by giving valuable and insightful feedbacks. you are nice and just not to be rude to students and uh, what else can we give as a prompt are uh, you nice and what else and um you consider students um objectives that and then we just based about um i think I'm not sure we need that right here. Okay, let's say just 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 leave it that way, and don't get. We will not get the um, wall personalization part of it. But the only thing we need here is just to recreate this uh, same thing here, just by creating a new thing here. So we just do this, and then we do this, and we do user, and then we just paste a message here, right? And the message should be this, um, regret that button. That message, nice. Okay. So, and then we'll pass this here without, you know, without this, we just need to pass conversation. And then we'll get the feedback, right? We don't need the world, um, yeah, we don't need the world array of, of things. Um, yes, so right here, we can do the same here in this chat now. So when you click on the feedback, I think we need to update our um, components here because we have the feedback into the component, but we don't have an angler for the feedback click button. So what we need to do right now is um, feedback handler is equal to yeah, something like this, pretty simple, this an empty function for a moment and then we need to define it in the chat bubble here then we come here and we say you also need um how to tell you what is feedback handler okay feedback handler here and then we pass the feedback handler here as the same thing as this as a voice function okay the feedback handler or oh, no Okay, feedback handler is actually optional. So let's do this here, like this, and then yeah, that's good. So whenever we have the feedback part here, so we just do uh, unclick, and then go call feedback handler. Okay, 
So what will happen is that when you click on this, it just it will just it should. <laughs> uh, let me check with the handler. Okay, we are doing something. So we will do something like alert message. Okay, so if you click again, yeah, we're having an object. So message is an object for the moment. We message of content. Yeah, and then when you do this, we are getting I'm learning. Okay. So what we need to do is just write a real function here um, to handle this. And uh, this function will get message content. So this will be um, feedback handler, or our local feedback handler. And this we need to create this function, prefix at missing declaration. And um, here, okay. It's actually the same logic that we have in 200 from submission here. So we send back something back end and then we get a response and then yeah. And then. So we don't need this first part here. All we need is just this resp part. So we're trying to send something to back end using Axios. And then when we get the response, we, we may show it in from any any kind of way. So let's do this. I don't want this. I want it that way to be consistent. Okay, and then it's an async function. Perfect. So this is not needed. Um, yeah, and this as well is not needed. All we need is just a message, I think. Let me check again. Uh, yep, message. And this message should just be content. Okay, and then if it's chat, we call it um, feedback. And we'll do something pretty simple. We, we, we will log in first, okay? Um, we'll try it out. Open the control. Go to console. Yeah, and then we clear this. We click on feedback and we get what? To work. Ah, pending. Okay. Yeah, we get a response. So hopefully it's logged. We get a response and we get this and we get a message. That's the sense say, um, I'm happy to have a lot of being English tutor. That, that's too long, I think. We need to change the prompt in a way uh, it will actually. Okay, I think I, I know what to do. Um, it comes here and say review this English text. So I think we need to first give some voice to the assistant, like um, which word can I review or something to make it realistic assistant. Which content can I review? And this should be maybe better. Let's see. I'm going to click here again and wait for the response. Okay, we get the response this time. Uh, hopefully we get something good. Sure, I can help you correcting the spelling in this. Okay. Um, so, preview. Uh, I am learning. Yeah, that's nice, right? It's not recognized word in English. Uh, it should be, I'm learning. Please let me know if you are. So I think we should uh, restrict the model to just give the review. Only give the review. I think maybe it's a nice part. Only give the review and no other content. Okay. So right now, what we will do is just, you know, um, print or, 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 or alert the, the review for the moment. And um, we'll find a way to put it into a nice pop-up letter. All right. So let's go back to the chat here. Um, the same way we got this in it. The content of the message so we just alert if everything is right we just do an alert that is the content yeah nice yo then sh this should be this should be okay so when you click on this it will load and we'll say yeah sure um i'm learning should we i'm learning is there anything else can I so set that's good right we have a review server and uh, the next part will be um the text-to-speech part to make it possible for the user to actually communicate with the with the system with your voice.
Yes, and uh, for that we need quite new tools, but um, so far our model seems good. If you say, um, uh, um, your yeah, what would you like to learn? I will, right? Or maybe we can just give it a, a little pop up at the bottom with the feedback. And anyway, we'll find a way to do that. I would like to travel home for, let's say, for Paris to see how good it would get, how to give a feedback for that. So we get this, we say, oh, Paris sounds beautiful. And then what about the feedback? Click on this and, you know, you say, I would like to travel to Paris. It's romantically great, but you could phrase it more naturally and say, I'd like to travel to Paris. We'll say, I have a strong desire to travel to Paris. So that seems extremely nice to me. Okay, that's that's nice. Um, and um, yeah, uh, we have to finally give some voice to our models and make it possible for the user to get, kind of personalize the whole project, right? But so far, everything seems good. Um, we fixed some few errors. The prompt are bad, to be honest. The prompt are not that good. We have the fictional characters. I think they are in a creep or whatever. Um, yeah, we need to fix that as well. And uh, this should be pretty simple because we have in our GitHub, we have a project called uh, Cookie TTS, um, and we did a lot of projects. Uh, I think Marta was one of them. Marta Gitter, my, my GitHub, you should have a Marta project there. And this Marta project is something we built before, right? Um, we have a playlist of video for that. Um, Hello. Yeah, um, a pretty nice playlist with a lot of things and how to use it. Takes a speech model, um, uh, we cook it TS and everything. Um, yeah, here we'll have, we'll pass the text and you get the wave and you send back the wave to the front end. We did a complete application with that. So we can, you can check as well. Uh, if you're interested, um, you will see some part where we have a nice front end in next year's again. Yeah, this nice front end with captcha and everything. So if you're interested into how we will build, completely build the server, that will be a nice way to begin with. So I will put this complete playlist into uh, in, in the description as well. So you see how we set up the complete Matra server. So but the thing we'll do here is just use this app part here and use it in our project, right? We'll just use it as an API because we, we, we have here um, a pretty nice views and we, uh, we will just remove this view with this rendering of the index view. And then move the recapture part here. We don't need it for the moment. And then we just get this text, get the output, and send the output back to the front end, right? So that we can read it out loud here. This is the first part. Uh, sorry, here. This is the first part. The second part is what we did um, in another project called um, the, the, the sales assistant. Sales assistant, I think I can get it again. No repo. Okay, I think we need a new series of video about sales assistance as well. Thank. Sorry, um, this one. Hey, welcome. Okay, and uh, here we have the GitHub here. Same day, yeah. Same day clone. I think it's also called same day clone. Um, this as well is pretty nice because we have the backend and we had a possibility to switch it back to something else. Uh, that we're not. Or TTS, but actually, um, uh, 11 labs, I think, if I'm not wrong, yeah, 11, lab, 11 labs. So we have almost everything we need. I'll put all this tutorial in the description for you to understand because doing a complete tutorial about how to use 11 lab, for example, showing how to clone voices, how to use this to this voices, how to change between people, how to pay for credits, how to stream the voice, it's a lot of things. And yeah, it's actually what is playing to this 35 minute tutorial. And um, yeah, okay. So um, this is what we have done so far. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next part of the tutorial. Actually build the voice server. As I explained in the previous part, we'll be using the same day code from the same day tutorial. So you have the repo, I'll put the repo and um, you will have everything you need to run um, this project. And I'll also put the link uh, to the tutorial itself. And 
what we need to do is just to make this work, this read out loud. So we can click on it and it can read this text for you in English, right? And we want it to be available at least for um, cookie DTS that we can run locally without any API, without nothing for the moment. So we'll first start with cookie DTS. And uh, in the upcoming tutorials, we will add much more voices, add um, other AI providers, because right now we just have Olama with Gemma two billion parameters that we don't really switch. We don't really have these possibilities to switch between uh, large language models. But for the moment, yeah, we'll just use this and we'll change this uh, to have our cookie test script, right? So for that, we need to come here and get this text first. Um, chronic, yeah, HTTPS. So go to our VS code, uh, come here, open folder, and into our desktop, we create a new folder called um, yes, the la voice, and this will be our Python project, right? So we can open the folder, and um, yeah, into the terminal, we just do a git clone. Let me just, yeah, we do a git clone this, and then we put a dot at the end to, to save it into the folder first. And then we open it in within the file explorer, and then we relate the front end, we don't need it. We copy everything into the back end and paste it into our front end. We delete this, we delete the kit folder as well. We don't need it for a moment. And we come into this main here, this main file. So let's just close this a bit so you can see clearly. Yep. And close this as well. Nice. So here, what we need to do is to replace this uh, LP lab, or we just need to create a new, a new um, function here. That will actually call cookie things. And for that, we need some other code that we have from some other tutorial. I will also put everything in the description for you. Um, this Mata code here, the Mata project. And we need this file, this TTS file. So um, you come to this TTS file, you just copy the whole content. Right? And uh, you create a new file, you paste it inside, and you save it into um, TTS.py. Yes, right. TTS.py. So you can import TTS here. So what you need to do is actually we have here as well. Um, yes, into the views we need this part of the code. And also, if you still really want to know how we build this, what everything means here, there's a really long tutorial explaining it in three series where we deploy, we build and deploy a text-to-speech model. So you can see. Uh, I will put this link so you can watch the whole playlist um, and how to use Docker, how to use Flask, how to use a cookie TTS and, and everything around it to build and deploy a text-to-speech model. So this is uh, what we need to place to do. We need to paste our code here. And uh, we call it voice slash cookie. And if we want it in get parameter, we'll remove the capture. We don't need to catch up for the moment. And uh, here, yes, this is well. Um, yes, so this, what we need here, instead of this, I think we're getting a get parameter, so it's different. Here's text. And we need to import synthesizer from TTS. No. Um, let's first install IO, import IO. Yeah, import IO. So what we need is import this as well. This is from Flask. Oh. And then we need to import the synthesizer. So what we do is just come up here and we do from TTS import center. I don't know, we got it. Synthesizer. Yeah. Synthesizer. Great. So we don't have any other error. So the, the only problem here is that we need some other API here. Okay, that arcs, yes, to get, and we pass the text, yeah. and then this should be fine. Um, this one, we'll call it the voice, 11 lab, and we will use it later, right? 11 labs, we need the same parameters, we need to change this to this, and then pass the text here instead of the streaming response. 
Good. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but for the moment, we're using Drupal. Yes, for the moment. And for this specific use case, we need um, to add some requirements there because we need this package here that you can see TTS here. Um, here, requirement TTS. And we need to install all those packages. For the moment, right on my computer here, I use the terminal until now, but for this specific Python workspace, we need Conda. And to have Conda, you will need to go to the Conda page, Conda, and install Mini Conda, okay? And uh, to install Mini Conda is actually pretty simple, you know, Mini Conda. Uh, you will go to this page and you will have um, installation, installing Mini Conda. You will download it for your operating system and install it. So it's that simple. And then afterward, you have this Mini Conda prompt uh, where it will help you create environment that you can actually delete. So it means we will work into a virtual environment, a Python virtual environment, somehow a Python environment. Uh, and then we can just remove this environment when we are done with every test that we are doing. So we don't break our main Python um, on our operating system. So uh, for that, I think you need to create an environment. And it's, it's like this and you give the name of your environment. But I think I have already the environment uh, called TTS and Doppler, I think. Well, either TTS or Doppler, but I think it showed it TTS, Conda activate. TTS, TTS is, a, is the name I, I gave before. So you after trading the environment, you need to do Conda activate and activate the environment. So you can see here that we are in the TTS environment right now. Uh, we go into our folder. Voice. Okay, so here we just do a pip install install our requirements to change thing. Yeah. Okay, it's pip trees. We got our Python tree, pip tree. Okay, nice. Um, flux calls. Let me quickly check. I think there's an error here. Okay. Normally, I have most of these modules, but it will install the complete module for you. So if you have some problems, it will actually tell you what is the problem. On Windows, you can have some C++ uh, Windows-related file to install. And in that case, just click on the link that is on the error and go and install the package that the, the prompt or the common prompt actually actually just install, and that will solve your problem. So right now, we have all the packages in installed. And uh, to run the program, we just do a Python man.py and uh, yet uh, synthesizer from import name. Okay, let me check. Which is server. Okay, it should be nice. Should be fine. Ah, yes. Oh, sorry. So it's TTSFI. Um, yes, and we need to rename it, maybe. I think I just called the big TTS instead of simple TTS. So right now, it should import, well, the normal file. Okay. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um, this actually here, um, actually work for Ubuntu, right, on Linux-based environment. So I think you need to switch it here. Uh, we are using Conda here on Windows, and it will point to the specific location where we have these files installed, which is um, this here, right? So if you want, you can just copy the specific here and paste it here, right? No need to uh, use by, by site packages, or you can just check. You will do uh, Python and then import site. No. And then the um, site that with packages. You will see the locations and you will see this is the, the same that we have up here. It's actually this one here, right? I will type packages and there, uh, yeah, so it's index one. Yeah. So clear, exit first, clear, oh. And then we run it again. So normally here we are specifying the model that we want, Takatron. This DC, you can actually choose whatever model you want to have, or whatever voice you want to have from the list of models that Cookie TTS provide. 
but in our case, we want this to occur from. Okay, so now let's test our model, right? Uh, we just come here and we do a local host 5000. Speak, yeah, that trades one. Okay, I think it's voice. Voice at cookie. Voice at cookie. Right? Uh, voice slash cookie. Yes, and then text. Right. Okay. So this should be okay. Ah, let me check. Um, ah, yes, this is running on for 5,000, so I need to change here. I think this should be 5,000 as well. So I think what we need to do is to change here. World 5,001. And we stop this and we run it again. Yes, so if you go up there you will see we have a different part and um this part will be 5001 yeah nice i am good oh that's amazing so our voice server is actually working the only thing we need to do is just to um populate an audio html element when whenever we click on this without lock right and uh, let's do this directly into our front end hopefully we have it opened yeah we have it open here um, yes, so what we need to do is to create an audio element that's actually hidden, okay? Uh, and for that, we can put it wherever we want, maybe up there, um, after the main, oh no, I think it's better to add a button here. Audio, yes, and then if you see, she put to nothing, and then we have her class names. Okay, we don't have it here, right? We have an audio here, but we don't have it here for the moment. Um, what we need is to create a reference to this audio. Uh, we need to have here, let me just close this. Costs, uh, says audio refs is equal to use refs. And then we go down there. We do the same thing that we did. Uh, no, okay, we didn't do it here. We do uh, ref. No, not this ref. Ref is equal to um, audio. We close some items here. Okay. So we have a clear view here, and it close this as well. This as well is not needed. Okay, nice. So, close these. Okay. Ah, nice. Okay. Um, yes. So now what we need to do is to automatically set this source, uh, whenever we click on top, right? Um, we need to have a voice handler here. I think we already have something like that. Okay, no, no, not here. Uh, on the other. No, here. Yeah. Uh, on this other part here, we have a voice function here. So what we'll do is just uh, read our text. Of, uh, we just passed a message that pointed. And we'll create this function. Quick uh, add missing function declaration and go to the missing function declaration. I prefer the new way. Oh, okay. So, what we have here is the content of the element we need to read. And uh, what we need to do is actually pretty simple. We have to do uh, OGREF, that current, uh, that I think is um, SRC, is equal to our local value, right? 
Um, okay, we need to first check that audio ref is not null. If audio ref, and then we do this. Just to run. Yes, and then we can do this. Um, okay. HTTP, for the moment we'll do it like this. We can actually use the next um, uh, variables that we can add here as well. Like this next like API, let's let just use the next API to be honest. Um, and here we'll just do HTTP local host 5001. Okay. And then we'll come here, we do process of uh, That's it. Plus, we need a uh, voice or speak. I think it's speak or voice. Voice search. Okay. And then we need text is equal to content. Okay. Yes, something like this. And it seems like the FS is that Mrs. is untyping another. Okay. Um, and then we still need, so let me just do this. Um, okay. So what we need to do is to so audio ref dot current. Okay. Okay. So we will first check if everything's right. Yes, everything seems okay. So what happens when you click here? It's saying this is not found. Um, oh, it's not 3,000, it's 5,000. So this should be, that's correct. Wherever I'll adding in next config, we have something similar to that. Or at least in the, oh yes, here. I said it in the wrong file. Yeah, this should be fine now. Okay. When you click again. Hi, how can I help you today? Oh, that's nice. So uh, the voice is not perfect, but we can do with it, right? Um, we can say, um, I want to learn more English words. So when we will have, um, let's say, what happens when we have a normal thing. So the feedback should be you're good, right? Or something like that. Um okay. I want to learn you what is dramatically correct, but oh that's perfect. That's good. So you have your feedback. I'm interested for a new world to help me read. So it's helping you with new ways of saying the same thing. And if you close this and say, okay, I want to read this out loud, what happens is that uh if you just launch this I'd love to help. What words would you like to learn today? We can explore the nuances of words related to justice and revenge in classic literature. Okay. That's nice. So we have a huge part of our software actually built. Um, what we may want to be right now is actually make some interactions a bit nicer, which means uh, having better feedbacks, having um, loader, having, um, yeah, some loader when you click on things, right? So these are pretty simple. So the first order we need to add is for this, when you send a message, right? Just to have a loader in this, in this, in this single icon here. And, um, when you click on feedback, have a loader as well, loading, and then showing you the feedback that you requested. Um, yeah, so that will come in the next part of the video. So, uh, welcome to this part of the video where we actually add uh, more reactivity to our site or our website, like loaders and uh, a bit nicer feedbacks. And um, for that, we actually have this working, right? We have the feedback server where we click and it will say, oh, you said something wrong or everything is correct. Um, yeah, I see you're looking to improve English library. You just say whatever it wants. Um, okay, and here we have the read out loud that we just call our 
text server here. Um, and by the way, this is a Tugdian parameter model. Um, what we may do in the upcoming part of the tutorial is actually fine tuning the model to be extremely good at teaching languages, right? At teaching English specifically, because uh, the model is too small to have multilingual capabilities, right? Um, so for the moment, right here, we have uh, those parts working. So if I click here, it will read it. Hi, how can I help you today? Okay, that's nice as well. So what we need to do is just add a dialog for this feedback loop, uh, for this feedback button and actually add the loader for some of the interactions and for that we'll use this this is uh you just have to google it to style taiwan ui you can use whatever library you want but this uh gives you some um nice ui so you don't have to code everything from scratch so you have the preview here like what what the button will look like like a loader button will look like uh, like a model uh will look like and here you have the code right you can choose here html to or react so from now we'll do it in React. And when it comes to loaders, we'll use this simple CSS loaders, right? Here, okay. So this will be our loader part and then we'll just have to copy this first and paste it into our CSS. So we open our global CSS. Um, yes, so we have some parts here, something like this, right? Okay, nice. And then what we we'll only need to do is to paste this somewhere. Um, and for that, we can come at the chat here and um, in the send SVG instead of the send itself. Sorry, instead of the send SVG here, we can have the loader, right? And for that, we need the conditional thing with the loading state. And so for this section, we first need to have a state because loading uh, set loading scroll to your state of false okay and then we go down there where we have our SVG. we just have a tenery operation here let's say are you loading if you're loading then show this if not then show this this is the thing if not then show our SVG icon here or our text okay but in that case we need to wrap it into this nice okay so now here nothing happened right nothing actually happened but if we click on this send send message this um form submission um action here this handle form submission we need to first set loading to true and let's set it back to false when it's done right uh, in any case here or uh, try or catch or whatever we need to set it to false okay so what happens right now is that when we do um i hi how are you we'll see that there's a loader that loads until we get a response and then disappear uh, let's wait for the response. We need to reduce the size of our loader. Okay, and it needs up here. So we need to reduce the size of our loader here. Ah, yes, I see. Okay, so we still have the same error. Let, let just, you know, we are studying this. So let's just make it load every time. So this is loading, and then I think the problem is the size here. Okay. Here. Okay, nice. So it fits into the box now. Um, what we need to do is actually to make this event like the read uh, out loud and the other one loader, right? So we have loader um near of it or something that when you click on it loads right so we can use the same loader here so whenever we activate this loader this will initially load something so the next part of our thing is to have this this nice model here and we need to create a component called model we paste this inside okay nice um we need these packages
but we don't need this one. No. And Tamu, Tamu, and Pian Star. In the meantime, let's move the icon. Exclamation screen will put in here. So, uh, uh, well, the whole content, we already need the whole content uh, of this model. So what we need here is just to be like this. Um, I think it's better to let the whole content here. Okay. So it would be nice just to have a section where we have the title like this and then the content like this, right? So what we need to do is to include this uh, into our chat. Um, yes, at the bottom as well. So we'll just call, is it exporting something? Let me check. Um, model. Yeah, exporting model. So we can access it here, model, and see how it looks like on our interface. Okay, nice. So we have this model. So now we can, yeah, you know, we can um, style our model. Uh, what we need is actually to first delete the here. So we have we have it in the model. We have the feedback. We, we call it our uh, feedback. And then here we just need, um, yeah, I think we need to close. We don't need to deactivate button. We only need the close button. Nice. And then this will be the content of, 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 of our feedback. And this will be the uh, props or uh, the children's. So we just click this children. And we go up here. We get children's here. Because this will be a markdown element, right? And we don't want to pass this markdown uh, element into our model. So what we need to do is just to children or children is just any, okay? Okay, any, any, any. Okay, this is okay. And then here we need a child somehow. So we have a markdown reader somewhere here into this chat bubble here is markdown with children here. So it's needed as well into our feedback model so let's just import it here and um call it the same way we do here okay with our feedback and uh, we need a state that will get that will keep our feedback yes it is and then this will be feedbacks okay right um so now we need states to keep the feedback and also to keep the model state, right? And for that, we need to pass a few functions here. The first function is um, set open. And this set open will not appear here. We'll not use it from here. So we need the set open to be used somewhere else and the open as well, the state. So this, this shouldn't say the set open in the, in, the, in the state as well. So let's say open and set open. Set open is a function. And open this body here. Okay. So we can cut this without any problem and paste it into this because we want this to actually yeah, open and close the model, the model. Okay. So now what we need is unclose set open to so unclose text. Okay, so this function has a specific signature for value body and to nothing, to void. Yes, so this is solved. Um, yes. We have, okay, we have this. Then we need the feedback. Feedbacks and the set. Feedbacks, 
Yeah, this will be empty for the moment. And what we need here into our handle, no, into our feedback handler here, is into instead of do this, we just doing this, we just set feedbacks here. Okay, nice. So now at the bottom here, we need some other functions like open is equal to open. Ah, we don't need, ah, uh, yeah, sorry. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just set open here. Set open, we should go to set open. Okay. And then, the, yes. So what we need to do is just make this false first. And then when we um, have a response here, we just, no, not here. Here instead, we just set a set open to true yeah good uh and we have to set the loader to false to stop loading false okay so now if we say um hi how can you help okay let's say something like this and it's loading it will give us a response Hopefully soon. Yes, uh, we have it here. But when we click here, uh, I need to set the loader as well. Uh, okay, now we have a really nice things here saying, hey, um, hi, uh, use up incorrect pronoun, use up conjunction, some kind of feedbacks from the server. So we need to integrate the loading state here. So what we need to do is just do a set loading, sorry. Set loading to true and then set it back to false when everything's done. Same for reading the text, right? Read text. Normally, this should be a bit more complicated because we need to take the stream here. Okay, let's just do this this way and then do it to true and then set time out so after maybe 10 seconds. Yeah, we set it back. Okay, so let's give this a type. I think it's any. And then we are good to go, right? So if now I click here, this will load. Can I, help, the... can I help you today? Okay, after five minutes, it will stop. Hopefully, it will stop. Not, uh, okay, I think I did something wrong. I need to make it false here. Okay. And uh, if I click again. Hi, how can I help you today? Yeah. So I think five minutes is too long. We just need to mimic the loading of the audio at the back at, at the back end because we don't need to listen to the streaming of the audio from the browser. Um, yes, so this is fine. So if you click here, it loads and say the correct billing is hello, how can I help you? So, yes. So, uh, each part of our software is done. Um, yeah, so hopefully in the near future, I will build the next part, um, where we will have this mode here. So when you switch it on, you have someone you can talk to directly, uh, as the assistant that we built into our last project. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can actually, whenever you can, or whatever you want to do on it, you can actually change the prompt of this users. Um, yeah, and also a nice thing to do as well that we may tackle in upcoming tutorials is actually to make it possible to personalize those people depending on the needs of the user. So it means depending on your, on your objective, we actually personalize these people, these people you will be working with, uh, which means if you're just doing something for fun, you will have people, characters that are fun characters. And this is also something you can ask to the, uh, latest language model to do. And, um, yeah, so this is kind of the end of the big, long first part of this tutorial. Hopefully in the future, we'll add much more functionality on top of this. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video so far. And if you have any feedback or any, I hope you, uh, reach this, this last part of the video. So if you have any feedback, uh, let me know. And if you reach this 
specific part of video uh, right um, reached in the comment so I know how many people watch the world tutorial and um, yeah there are all other really nice video coming on the channel if you are interested into AI building AI product don't forget to subscribe and give a like it will help a lot and uh, okay so fine and see you in the upcoming videos ciao